Hello, this is a general video to teach you about drain care and maintenance. If I use a drain, I typically will use a drain that looks like this. It's very thin, small, it's plastic. The bottom part of the drain will enter the body at some point. Typically I'll use two for abdominoplasties and on occasion for complex breast redo surgery or revision surgery, I'll use one in the breast, but it's pretty rare. What you'll have leaving the body will be this part. You have the rest of the plastic tube connected to a bulb. The bulb has a cap. When it's charged, it'll look like this. It'll be compressed fully and on suction. When the bulb fills up over time with fluid or liquid, it'll slowly get larger and larger. Whenever you're emptying and recording how much is coming out, you will uncap the bulb so that it is full and you'll look at the measurements. On every bulb, there's a listing of 25 cc's, 50 cc's, 75 cc's, and 100. For the most part, you can estimate how much you have in. If it's right lined up, then obviously you know 25 cc's. Once you take the measurement, you're gonna write it down and pretty much write the date and time you record it. Most of the time for abdominal plasties, you have a little bit more fluid the first couple of days. So you're gonna to wanna to do that measurement at least twice a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. The first day, you may even do it two or three times because you have a little bit more fluid. Always remember after you record it, charge the bulb again. So compress it, put the cap back on, and then it should remain like this. As far as maintenance of the drain, I typically will allow you to take a shower um, two days after the procedure. It's okay to get the area wet. You don't want to have water hit directly on it, but water running over it is okay. You can get a shoelace or a lanyard and put this underneath and around your neck so it can just hang. After you get out of the shower, you want to pat the area dry and you can use a little dab of Neosporin around the drain site and you can cover it with the clean gauze. And that's how you'll care for the drain. So troubleshooting, if the drainage stops immediately, in other words, the drain has been putting out 20 cc's or 30 cc's, you know, every um, day or so, and it just stops and nothing's coming out, the odds are it's clogged. And when it gets clogged, a lot of time you'll have a little bit of fibrinous tissue, which is kind of like healing tissue on the inside, that'll plug up the tube. When that occurs, you need to strip the tube. To strip the tube, you'll need to support the base wherever it exits the skin. If it exits the skin here, you'll support it here, You'll get something slippery like soap or hand sanitizer and you will stretch and more or less milk the end and you'll advance up with the hand that's supporting and you'll continue to kind of stretch and capture all the drainage and what that'll do is that'll force whatever is blocking the tube into the bulb itself. You may have to strip it every day or two depending on how much uh, fibrinous exudate comes through the tube itself. Let me show you a better picture of what that looks like up close. All right, so all I did is I got a little hand sanitizer to make things slippery. I have the tube, and I'm just gonna milk it. So I'm compressing it with my fingers, I'm holding it stable, and I'm going all the way until it goes into the drain. When you do that, that's gonna clear whatever's blocking the drain and then flow should resume as normal. So troubleshooting number two, let's just say you, you cap the tube and it fills up immediately. If that occurs, you could, be, you could have a hole in the drain tube itself. It could be pulled out of the skin to where that's catching air. And at that point in time, if it's not holding suction, you probably wanna give the office a call so that we can see what's going on.